My name is Brooke and I'm a geologist. It's nice to see you again, or if you're new to the channel, this is where I talk about everything geological. Tiny hand. And show you lots of nice, cool rocks, fossils, and minerals and things. So I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, so I wouldn't want you to miss out on any of the cool upcoming videos. It's another video in a series where we look at minerals and how to identify them in field and in hand specimen. Today we're going to be looking at our old friend quartz. Look at the quartz. Look at it. Oh, it is so shiny. And the other silica minerals. So let's get started. Jim. The silica minerals aren't really an official group of minerals. I've just called them that for ease of putting them all together. And they're all the minerals like quartz and opal and chalcedony and chert. Is it chert a lithology or a mineral? That are formed from silica, SiO2. That's silica, two oxygens. Silica is one of the silicate minerals. And that means that when you start off with that basic SiO2 and start adding other things to it, like aluminium and iron and magnesium, you start getting minerals based around the little silica end group. And that's where you get a lot of your other minerals from, like feldspars, pyroxenes and amphiboles. And we'll look at them in, in later, detail later. So the most common form of quartz you're going to encounter is going to be as detrital grains, like sand grains in this piece of sandstone. That's what all those little sparkly bits are. Or as igneous and metamorphic minerals, like in this piece of quartz porphyry. We've seen that before in other episodes where we've looked at specific rocks, so we don't really need to go into this too much. Outside of detrital and igneous and metamorphic grains, the most common form of quartz you're going to find is this milky stuff called vein quartz. Looks a lot like calcite, except it has a conchoidal fracture and a kind of greasy, glassy texture. Easy way to tell is can you scratch it with, say, your steel hand lens or a pen nib or a pen knife or something like that? If you can, it's calcite. If you can't, then it's got to be quartz. So like the name implies, often found in veins in association with uh, tectonic processes, faults, um, igneous and metamorphic processes as well. Like if you've had an intrusion of a dike or a granitic body, you'll get lots of quartz veins and they'll often be mixed up with calcite, which is a bit of a pain. A less common but also massive form of quartz you might find is rock crystal. And this is more or less pure quartz and it's formed this very glassy texture. And you're thinking, well, that just looks like glass. And that's because glass is also a silica dioxide with a homogeneous structure. The reason quartz isn't glass isn't uh, in your windows isn't glass as a crystal is because it doesn't have a defined crystal structure. If your quartz has had a little bit of space to grow, maybe the vein wasn't just like a thin area and it's had plenty of time to grow, then you might get sparkly masses of little quartz crystals. And here you can really start to see the things we discussed earlier, the crystal habit, the luster, the cleavage, the fracture, that sort of thing. And you can see how sparkly it is. It's absolutely lovely. I hope that shows up on the camera. And as it takes longer to cool and as it's got more space to grow into, the quartz crystals start to get nice and large. You can see we're starting to get these nice big prismatic ones now. And then we've got these really big chunky prismatic quartzes that we saw last time as well. We've got this red stuff on the back with this rounded shape. So these are probably attached to a piece of uh, kidney shaped hematite. You also notice that these ones are black. So most of the ones we've looked at have been so far being transparent or milky white, but these ones are starting to go black. And this is smoky quartz. So there's tiny minerals and in inclusions in there, maybe zircons or something. And within those tiny minerals, there's even tinier grains of minerals and things like uranium. And the radi radiation given off by that uranium is distorting and disrupting the lattice and causing it to go black. Why smoky quartz looks smoky. That leads us on to the next kind of prismatic quartz, which is all of the different colored varieties. How exciting. You can see on this one, we've got these prisms there, but also at the back, we can see that we've got these purple colored quartz crystals. And purple quartz is generally known as amethyst. And the discolor, the change in the color isn't caused by radiation damage this time. It's caused by iron atoms getting trapped inside the lattice of the crystal as it grows. They don't react with the crystal and form a, an iron silicate mineral. They just sort of get trapped inside it and deform the structure. Here's some more vein quartz, but this has got, again, iron inclusions in it within the, the structure, and that's caused it to have this lovely pink colour. And this is not generally known as rose quartz. Some more smoky quartz now. This is a really interesting specimen 
because all of the crystals in this rock, including these tiny wiggly one quartz crystals, are all just one crystal that's grown in this weird graphic rune-like way, it's called graphic granite. Again, it's smoky quartz, so we know there's radiation damage in there, but there's some clear quartz crystals as well. We'll have a close-up of this one because it's absolutely incredible rock. But it's mostly made of quartz, and you can see those nice smoky quartz prisms there. So then we have this one. I hope the colour turns out because this is a, like a really almost fluorescent colour. So we have these little quartz spikes there, and they're growing on, they have this weird sort of pale blue lavender colour that's almost fluorescent, and they're growing on top of another kind of silica, which leads us nicely into chert and chalcedony. And chalcedony is microcrystalline quartz. It's quartz where the individual crystals, those, what we saw before as those nice prismatic euhedral ones, are so tiny that they just form a homo homogeneous mass. Chert generally forms massive forms where you can't see individual crystals, but it may form some quite unusual morphologies of the aggregate crystals. So we'll have a close-up look at these ones, these little chalcedony stalactites, or stalagmites. Another type of chalcedony is called agate, or agate, and that's where it's got lots of swirly layered colours, stuff like this. You'll have seen things like this before in rock and mineral shops and on the internet. This is a really spectacular variety called moss agate because the inclusions of it, which can be other minerals or just uh, different elements again, looks like it's actually you're looking down into a lake or onto a little landscape scene so we'll definitely try and get a close-up of this one because it's absolutely incredible and jasper is a form of chalcedony that is so full of iron oxide it basically goes red jasper is often found in banded iron formations where it's an alteration product of the original ferrous silicate mineralogy this one i believe is from the lizard in cornwall where it's from the thermal alteration or seafloor alteration of basaltic ocean crust and mantle material during the when a bit of the ocean crust and mantle was hiked up onto the south of England. This one's been polished, it looks like that normally. It's got this dull luster, but we've cut it and polished it so it's got this nice shiny chunk like that. If you add a little bit of water to the chalcedony structure, to the quartz stru silica structure, you end up with this pseudo mineral called opal however we've seen this before this iridescent beautiful iridescent version of it but here's some where it's got this milky white with these nice dendritic inclusions we can see it's got the classic conchoidal fracture and this vitreous glassy luster but it's, it's not a proper mineral per se it's a pseudo mineral it's almost a mineral but not quite because it doesn't quite have a set defined mineral structure because of those water molecules this often forms from the uh, precipitation of, from silica-rich seawater, and so there's places in Australia where you find fossils that have been replaced by opal. And I've seen some really beautiful ammonites and bones and teeth and things where they've been completely opalized and replaced by fire opal, which is the really sparkly, iridescent kind. So there we go, a quick whistle-stop tour of quartz and friends. The only ones we didn't really look at today is the biogenic silica, because there are organisms on Earth that like to make their skeletons out of silica, basically out of uh, opal. And that's things like sponges and then microorganisms like radiolaria, like diatoms, which are a personal favourite of mine. And we'll look at those in another episode where we concentrate on the, on the paleontology. But large deposits of things like chert and chalcedony in marine rocks are from the accumulation of bits of these organisms after the organisms have died and sank to the seabed. Another way we get it is through hydrothermal action, either deep in the ground where you've got really hot water because it's really solvent and it'll just dissolve under pressure and go whooshing off with water. That's why you get it around faults a lot. Or through hydrothermal processes on the surface. So things like hot springs, a lot of the minerals that you get around there are things like tufa and so forth, are silica mixed up with calcium carbonate and that kind of thing. So silica, quartz, chalcedony, they're up everywhere. They're one of the most common minerals on the Earth's surface. And now you should have a good idea of what you're looking for when you go out looking for rocks and fossils and to be able to identify it and hopefully tell it apart from calcite. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you've got any quartzy questions, of quartz, I will answer them. What was I talking about? So funny, I can't erase my own memory. Leave your questions in the comments below. 
Have you seen any good examples of quartz? Do you have any quartz questions? I'd really appreciate it if you haven't subscribed already to, to give me a subscribe, leave a like, and then hit the notification bell so you get alerted to the, when the rest of the videos are on this series are online. So I'd hate for you to miss out for that. Thanks for joining me. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye. This is where I talk about my tiny hand. It's nice to see you again if you're just returning to us. Just work. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at the quartz. Look at it. Oh, it is so shiny. Look at the shiny quartz. Mm, so shiny.